Hello and welcome to our weekly podcast called The Secret Society for Human Work Advocates and Human Debt Fighters. I'm Diana Blomstrom. I'm a human debt fighter. I'm a social entrepreneur, the CEO of People Not Tech, um, and the co-founder of Tech Life Culture. And I am Dr. Alessandria Polizzi. I'm the CEO of Verdant Consulting. I'm also the global liaison for ISO on psychological health and safety. And our focus in our weekly conversation is to help you find resources, understand the latest tech, and remove barriers for driving human work in your organization. Come join us. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to us chatting about people, technology, culture, and everything in between. Um, hope you have had the chance to catch up with our uh, big excursion in the book last time. Thank you so much again uh, for listening to all of that and for asking the right questions. There's been, in fact, I, I probably have a good to sprint of wait, wedding through that to kind of figure out what we can, what we can parcel and and explain to people that there's so many concepts that I found have meet and need work. But thank you. Yeah, and thank you for sharing it. And I'm glad to join again to talk about human work in the workplace and how we create more thriving and healthy workplaces where people can do their best work. We're going to try to not be too profesh again. We tend to do that when we're trying to be organized. Um, the main reason we're trying to do that is when we have loads and loads of ideas, we want to talk to you guys about, it's always kind of spills into, let's be very, uh, on point and it never works out either way. Mm. So let's drop this bit. And, um, we were saying right before, we want to talk to you guys about obviously world mental health day, week, month. Um, secondly, ADHD month, actually big one. I think that the two should be, uh, to be connected. And if anything, um, I will say from the beginning of this podcast, if I speak faster, I'm more agitated or I'm more horrible than normal, that's because it is ADHD month. So I am allowed to be more ADHD than my normal sales. That's what I've um, decided. And my team decided. Follows, yes. um, <laughs> and, and then we want to talk to you guys about um, what we see that's a little bit worrying in terms of kind of knowledge and response and interest in deep human topics um lately in the market it's a bit a bit scary and it's probably tied with this entire mental health moment um and there was something that we wanted to start with yes i was gonna give you an, an anecdote um, okay so from linkedin and maybe it starts us on with a with a conversation hopefully um last week we came back from our annual 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 honeymoon and we also we hadn't seen our, our littlest one for quite a while and when we when we um were when we when we got to him and we started chatting one of the first things he's asked was have you kept an eye on what happened to the conservative convention over the weekend uh um because i know you guys were away and you know this this sounds a lot more casual than necessarily should for a 12 year old but we have a precautious one that's keeping his eye to the ground and it was very very uh, fair on important topics so he'll, he'll be very uh, attentive and one of the things he said was i i said no i haven't listened to anything yet so don't don't give me too much i know that the child is by default sometimes less permissive of, of some of the noises in the media that I would like him to be. So I kind of wanted to take a step back. So I minimized it. And he immediately jumped into saying, oh, you better not be excusing them for the things they've been saying. And I don't know, remember exactly what they said. And he said, well, Rishi Sunak, our actual prime minister, said a man is a man and a woman is a woman. That is 30 years loss for trans rights and people will die because of this. Do not try to excuse them. I was like, I'm not excusing anyone. I just don't know what you're on about. But the conversation was left with me doubting him. No less because we ran out of the conversation and the time and his face in his mother. And we dropped it. And um, about, you know, half a day later, when I finally got to unpack, I, I went through the trail of information. And um, I then saw a an, an amazing, I saw, and it started to dawn on me as I was, as I was, as I was checking that he was absolutely and completely right. That had happened. Our prime minister has said that 
you know, kind of throw us back tens of years in, in trans rights. And it is horrendous and horrible. And I've doubted him. So I've written a text on, or I was writing a, a post on, on LinkedIn saying I have, it's the first time I'll admit to my political convictions, which are probably not as far left as my child would like them to be. Uh, but this is unacceptable and it needs to be sanctioned. No one should, 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 uh, vote anyone in in power who says anything of the sort and um to me that was just kind of an an, an a democratic mechanism and i also it, it was a vulnerable moment and a proud moment like as a parent to see that your kid has seen it and had it right and i had to publicly apologize and say that i was a dumbass and he had it right and i had it wrong but an added bonus to this, I think, and finally bringing us to our HR maybe conversation and our kind of how do we deal with these big um, societal and, and cultural moments we, we in in the workplace, because they reflect on everyone everywhere, um, is the fact that in my LinkedIn post, I've used a position that was a lot more elegant, a lot more nuanced and a lot more towards um what is common sense and what is a man and what is a woman so a very um reserved position from the chief operating officer of wilkes uk and um it was marvelous to see because it was a, a, a dignitary that then i don't know what his political affiliations are for all i know he could be batting for the other side maybe that is the case in politics there's always some affiliation you should be wary of but realistically he he, he put up a good point and finally, to the point I'm making, the anecdote, LinkedIn, the state of LinkedIn. I shared the personal story. It was a genuine, genuine personal story that I thought, you know, humble brag about my kid, but a genuine personal story. And LinkedIn reactions to this have been six to this day or seven. And the post has more views than most of my posts over the last two weeks put together. It has. 12,000 or 10,000, I don't know, immediately acquired. So it's been seen wildly. And it, no one has had, or very few people, like you cannot tell me that from 12,000 people, six of them agreed. I put it to you that the vast part of 39% or whatever it is that they have in the, <laughs> in the polls these days of a subcategory of whoever this is being shown to agreed. But people are loath to even click a button that shows anything um, political in Europe and in the UK. So the fear of having an, an, a political affiliation in, in our world is a lot bigger than in your world. I was thinking about you guys. And with the fact that you've had to be so courageous at work about your political stance many times. How have you seen that pan out? Why are we more afraid than... We have been before. Are we not afraid enough? Should we be more professional about how we feel about these things? Or should we be authentic with what we believe? Yeah, well, so I think we should always be authentic with what we believe. But what we believe doesn't mean that we have to change everybody that to, be, to feel the same. Um, however, when I feel strongly, when your um, ideology means that I no longer exist, that is not a difference of opinion. Um, and here in the U.S., I mean, as you know, it is very polarized. Um, since 2016, uh, political um, disagree disagreement, hostility, um, and toxic behaviors were actually, before we had in the pandemic, that was actually one of the biggest problems we were having in the workplace. Um, and so, you know, it's overshadowed uh, in many cases by other things, but like, going through the Black Lives Matter movement, and then now the backlash of big companies pulling their DEI, DEIB initiatives, pulling um, and closing uh, these roles that they had this virtue signaling um, about only three years ago. Um, it's, it's a sad state of affairs. And globally, there are many things happening right now. It's difficult to have these very focused conversations and not be overwhelmed with the overshadow of what hap is happening externally, which is why I specifically call out external and environmental impacts on mental health as part of your workplace mental health strategy. Can you control, you know, wars blowing up? Uh, you know, we have a big situation with not having a speaker of the house right now. Like there's just so much 
um, happening, AI happening. Uh, no, those are not things that I, as a corporation, as a business can control. What I ought not to do is therefore ignore it and shame people for having uh, big emotions about it or it causing distraction. Rather, what I should do um, as an organization is be aware of the external pressures happening and then make plans accordingly, just like I would if I had a, a big investment in equipment that needed to be protected from storms or protected from damage. We are trying to help our employees do their best work for both their mental health and the bottom line for the business. But um, to kind of go back to your anecdote, I think, and about LinkedIn in particular, you know, LinkedIn, often what you'll see is a lot of, uh, you call you said it earlier, humble brags, kind of uh, this, this very masked uh, presentation of all things great in the, in the workplace. Um, every once in a while, you'll seek criticism, um, which I think opens up dialogue. Some people mm -hmm. can, can do that in a mature way and other people cannot. Mm -hmm. um, but what you do get is a lot of backlash as soon as you share something personal. And I think that tends to come from a very antiquated view of there's a work self and right. a, rest of the world self and we don't have we are not let you know split in that way we we yeah. have the one brain and so yeah. it's again that mindset of it's the same thing with the return to off it's this very antiquated and quite frankly highly proven to be unproductive and actually not uh the best policy and approach for driving outcomes that i think it, it, it infiltrates everything. But um, anyway, to say this, uh, good for your son for paying attention. Um, this next generation, uh, they are going to have a lot of headwinds yes. with, with AI and misinformation okay. and all of those things that are, you know, and unfortunately for us, our brains are wired to pick up negativity. Yeah. And we have like a Velcro for neg negativity. Um, and, uh, we just positive, uh, I ideas and concepts, um, We're not like right. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah, absolutely. But it, it, all that you said is extremely true. I just got off the phone on, a with, with, a, with a journalist for an interview for the book and the, the questions were phrased in such a way that leads me to believe that the, the, the deeper issues we're dealing with are not evident at all at the first layer of society so for instance they i was asked about busyness so then i had to deconstruct that what does that mean is it workload is it informational is it emotionally how you feel and, well i don't care what should managers do about busyness well it's a lot more complex than that i mean you know managers are busy as well and what is busyness and let's, let's see it again maybe there's something that yeah and, and as soon as i brought it to there's something that you personally need to to start working on and your limits and your boundaries as to what you are bringing as a, I just, I absolutely saw his eyes pop because it didn't make, I don't think he had even considered the fact that I, I talk to this often now in interviews, which is in the knowledge industry, it's almost like we had forgotten that we have a contract in place. The contract is you give me your skills. I pay you money for these skills in order to, construct something together contract yeah. was never you come over here and you sit here for a number of hours whether i can use you or not and if you are suffering or not don't tell me and just pretend you are wearing a tie it was yeah. never that it was we were never yeah. called to do this right yeah. so these other things we've attached to it and you need to wear a tie and you need to be professional <laughs> and you know, someone's asked you about these things the things you've been asked about were the, your skills and your skills at, yes at first were strictly um, you know, intellectual or, or practical, but they are no longer that. And we all know that our skills today have to be human and they have to be, I, I wish there were interviews that were asking you how much self care do you invest in yourself a week? Or I wish that if I took a mental health day off, then my manager would call me and said, did what happened? Well, dude, I was in a state. If I had worked for you yesterday, it would have been crap. And I, I'd like for them to go, 
thank you, actually. Can you still feel, do you feel you can deliver on this deadline? Are we okay with our outcomes? Is the sprint going to be delayed? Do you need any help? If not, thank you for not showing up. That's where we want to get to. And it's not far and it's not brain surgery. It's a change of the way we look at the problem. And the only people that can drive this are the people we talked to today, I believe. Yeah, well, so last week I had a focus group with about eight folks from the construction industry who are passionate about this area. And I promised I wouldn't share video of it so that they could feel comfortable and have a psychologically safe place to have this conversation. But a couple of things you mentioned actually came up there. Number one, they are seeing universally as new uh, as they interview people that the, the new group that is coming in, they are asking about what do you do for mental health? It is an expectation for people who are actively interviewing. So if they don't speak up about it, they're going to get asked, what specifically do you provide for mental health? And an EAP is not an answer. The second one that they mentioned, which I thought was really interesting, was that managers, traditional managers, people who've led up until, you know, in the last 20 years, took management positions with an expect, many of them, took management positions with an expectation of being a boss. I tell you what to do and you do it. If you don't do it to my expectation, then I tell you what you're doing wrong. They are no longer able to apply their leader, those skills. That is not the expectation. So now they have to go from a very command and control to a curious, open, vulnerable, compassion. This is not a skill set that they they have. they have. They don't know how to do that in an effective way. So what are they doing? They're doubling down on the thing they know, or they're super stressed about having to do a thing that they're incredibly uncomfortable with because yeah. that was always seen as a no-no. It's like you told me to yes. walk forward backwards before, and now you're telling me to walk forwards and I don't know how to do that. Yes. And that was a big kind of aha moment for me of, if I think about the human in the leader, yeah. right? That's, that's a psychosocial hazard being responsible for other people. If I think about that human and the transition that that human is trying to make, <laughs> how can we equip the willing to build those skills? And then what do we do with the ones who aren't? I, I disagree that we should equip the willing. We need to equip everyone. I don't think we should have people that are not willing in the workplace. I, I no, don't I don't think we should either. I look, today I've advertised my book on the on TikTok and I thought, but who would buy this? And I'm like, you know what? If they wouldn't, they shouldn't have one word about the workplace on TikTok today. Because, and it says on it, look, if you're, if you're a, not a professional, but if you're a grown up, you're an adult, you need to read this thing to figure out how to navigate in the workplace and how to take up the work that will be common sense. And let me tell you something, uh, Linda, not Linda, but little Linda. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call my TikTokers. Let me tell you something, little Linda. We... <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious. Like it's going to be a, a, I'm, I'm now making enough materials. You should, you should try Leslie because Leslie can work for a man or a woman. But anyway, go ahead. No, because Leslie can be, can go either way, right? But uh, let me tell you something, little Linda. What's happening is we sound morose and annoyed. We being the old guard, the, these ones that have all of a sudden decided to do their hair in a way and show up in TikTok when they could have not shut up on their LinkedIn we are going to be annoying. We are, you, we look like we've made our money and we don't care and whatever. Let me tell you all of that. Don't buy any of the LinkedIn stuff, right? That's number one. Number two, the things that the new generation are bringing to the workplace, you were going to kick and scream against them, but they are the future of humanity and we cannot thank you enough for them. But if it wasn't mm -hmm. for you guys to be the, this is my little one gets annoyed when I talk about snowflakes and woke people, but I say it with, I say it with, in, as an endearment term, because we don't have the balls to be snowflakes and woke people in, in the older generations of the professional uh, layer of, of, of people that have been in the workplace for so long, they're convinced that the only way it works is whatever the crap they told them in business school in 1983. And then they've doubled down. And one time it works in a performance review. So it must be the thing. And right. like exactly like Kyle says, these people 
are not horrible people. They just don't know any better. And it's not your responsibility, little Linda, to fix them and make them come around. No, that's my point. Drop them by the sides. I'm not saying that. I'm not putting that on you. Although, you know, in our time, I'm we may have grabbed other things we didn't have to, but don't do it. That's an idiotic thing. Keep taking care of your limits. But equally, start showing up because giving back shit will be required. If you're going to reestablish this contract from the enterprise and say, give me shit I require, um, respect, value, money, time, time to recharge, time to be at my best, time to be in flow, whatever, let me burn with passion. If they give you all that shit, you better be on point. You better be reading continuously. You better wake up early and do your fucking slow girl summer while you're working. <laughs> because the reality of it is, Self-care takes work and you got to mm-hmm. be prepared for it. And as, as professionals and as grown-ups, we got to be prepared. That this is the only answer for it is self-care, team care, organizational care, human work at every level. So you mentioned TikTok. <laughs> uh, have you seen this uh, girl math, boy math, corporate math? Have you seen corporate math? No, go ahead. <laughs> Your, oh, my God. Go ahead. <laughs> First of all, watch it. Mm. But corporate math is things like uh, having back-to-back meetings all day, but then wondering why people didn't get work done. Um, it is telling people to bring their whole selves at work, but then punishing them when they do. Yeah, It is giving people the uh, equivalent work of three people and then giving them time management oh, skills. Cool. That's a proper uh, hu- human debt corporate math. It's human. It's all the it's human debt. Cool. I'll go look at it. Yes, but it's all like when you sit down and you look at and we look at the math again, this is like how the work you and I do is so obvious, right? We're not this is not some formula that we figured. No, these are these are basic practical it just makes more sense. So, so should we like, repeat them every time when we say these are basic practical? I swear to God, yes. this is one of my new things, which is what we're saying is read five to ten books. Choose five to 10 ideas that you believe in and they are based on Google, psychological safety, resilience, and common sense, and then do them. That's all we're saying, okay? To be very yeah, clear. All we're saying, no. all we're saying is be human at work, right? When have you done your, answer this question, when have you done your best work? It's not in all this bullshit. It's when you were treated with respect, you were trusted, you had the ability to make decisions, you had people you could depend on, you felt valued, you felt supported. Yeah. These are all the things we learned from the Aristotle Project. These are all the things in WHO. So, I mean, this is not that hard. It's an, right? it's an echo chamber, though, uh, that we're creating here, and it scares me, right? So it, every time we start burning the two of us with what the hell is the holdup, you know, you can't help but kind of deflate into the holdup it's everyone. The hold up is all of us. That we, we have m- multiple moments a day when we choose to not be courageous, when we choose a word that's middle of the ground, when we choose to not quite tell the truth. Sometimes, very few times, it's because we are trying to be kind. Most of the times, it's because we are trying to protect ourselves. There are many mm-hmm. moments of impression management to our dear, near and dear ones to the public, to the mailman, I don't know what it is, but every time you try to project, you should get into the habit of figuring out, is this projection because I like it and it's making me look better? It's giving me dopamine from the fact that I've projected myself a certain way. Am I being an exhibitor that gets something out of this thing? Go ahead with your bad self. Go be a drag queen at work every day. But if you, I, I'm 100% serious, but if you I catch you yourself are. and you say, I'm projecting now, but I'm projecting because I'm afraid to be me. And if I were for real with my friends, I would not do this. Catch yourself. Don't do that. That shit is bad for you as an adult and for your company. <laughs> so, it, well, I, it's, it's, it's not really sustainable for, the, and the only person who loses in that is you. Um, but here, I think back to the conversation, kind of the purpose of this our secret society is we have the insight and we have the visibility into the research, the latest uh, that's out there on this topic for the people who are in the trenches, how, you know, giving them the material, the resources, the tools to be able to navigate this and drive uh, change. And so the meeting I had last week was with 
folks specifically from the construction industry, specifically who are passionate about this and who want to be able to make a change in their organization or who already have started to and, and can use some additional resources. And so when I asked them, if we could provide you with one thing, um, you know, for many of them, it was, I need examples of companies that have done this well. I need best practices. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, and that's where we're struggling, right? Dwena, is who's doing it well, who's doing it right. But, but that's fearful behavior. No one's doing it perfect, right. but anyone doing anything is better than you doing nothing. True. I always say that you don't want best. There is no such thing as best practice. There's no best practice for your individual thing. The same way that you're not going to see how to do an agile transformation. No one's going to come in and tell you, step one, you do this, step two, you do that. Because well, there's they sure, no. They sure will. They sure will. Somebody will pay. Somebody will take that money. That I doesn't mean, mean I can work. put steps on paper, but if you're not going to come up as, a, as an yeah. adult who wants to be there and wants to really yes. build, if we're not teaming, but we're going through a process, we're not going to take the human that right. away. Yeah, especially if we're masking. I mean, if, if everyone's masking, we're just going through the motions, it's not going to make a difference. I'll, I'll give it's you when you have that more. commitment. Sorry to interrupt you again, but I'll give you an example. We recorded a podcast last night um, called Married to Tech. And uh, what we are is like three different couples that are in all of us are technologists. And we were just hurriedly grabbing at some, we, we wanted to talk about some other things, but all of a sudden in the middle of it, it came up that the Dora report, the, my beloved Dora report that I've, I've dragged everyone in HR to read um, this year has come up with some form of unsettling and strange um, seedling of potential data. And it, it seems to indicate that trunk-based development uh, increases burnout in developers. It's a super complex topic. I didn't want to go into it into super depth because I was keeping it for my conversation with, with, with Dave in, in People and Tech because there's, there's loads of facets of it, right? So I just didn't think it was a, a fluffy enough topic for a conversation between the three of us. But it did spark a very good debate. It did, then sparked an example from one of us saying that they heard a company has just very recently appointed a chief purpose officer. And the discussion that always springs out of that is you're always going to have people in the room who are love it because finally they're doing something. Anything at all is better than nothing. And then you're always going to have very polarized people in the room who go, that is BS. That is not what you bloody need. And it's always going to make the person be... Well, of course, you need someone who does just that because it's that important. It's the back and forth and the personal experiences come up fast. Immediately, people are going to have, no, I will tell you what it is. Because the one time I saw real purpose, it was X. And look out for those conversations. Don't ever listen to the no's. Listen to what they tell you that happened. What was it that was a yes, right? What, what do you mean? That doesn't work, but what does? There's always a what I think does work. So in this particular, in this particular example, it was an, it, the, the, the gentleman giving us the story is a famous technologist who's like changing the world of devils by being super courageous and by having been in the most massive enterprise on earth before then. And he said we had purpose. It was coming straight from the CEO. And then we had some execs that tried to reinforce purpose. That didn't work. You know what worked? And then his wife chimed in with something that I think is the most valuable thing I've heard now on reflection a day later, which is she said, you know what worked? Is when they stopped talking, but they got all of us to understand what psychological safety was. They made us take mandatory uh, EQ courses. We didn't like it. We moaned, but then we all got it. Now we all have purpose. <laughs> I don't yep, think you even hear work for that it. that's what they're saying, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I don't think we even hear ourselves. But that's mm -hmm. what it takes. It takes all of us doing the bloody human work. Yeah. Yeah. We can't have the uh out we can't have the naysayers um mucking up the works. Well another thirty minutes. <laughs> Another <laughs> seven minutes of us moaning and crying, and, but never. Okay, never so what? So what have we provided to uh, those who want to do that work? Those who want to be that voice, who want to, to take those courageous steps. Uh, one is you're not alone, right? 
Two is it's coming anyway. So know that the future is on your side. We may not feel like it right now because of the pushback, right? Um, And that's antiquated. The alternative is the past. What else have we covered? I think we gave people some anecdotes. I think we reminded people where to go, which is to www.techletculture.com slash freebies, where there's stuff. There's mm-hmm. always either a new free play or videos or, or articles that you can grab on, not to use, not because we're trying to teach you anything, but to go show them to an exec. We know that's mm-hmm. what you need. You need that sound bite that makes that exec go, not these people again, fine, maybe it's a thing, have two million to try and change culture. <laughs> I mean, it's unfortunately going to take that, not not two million, but it's going to take you moving the little the little sound bites again. And we know we always leave you with more to-dos. Hopefully, if you can listen to these, you're, you're up for them. We're up for helping any way we can. And, and uh, keep the faith and keep the good work up. Yeah, absolutely. And if you need anything... We're in your corner, so reach out. Talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.